Today, we have a special guest, Rob Fraser, the CEO of Outway Socks. Rob is a visionary entrepreneur and leader in the fashion industry, known for revolutionizing the way we think about footwear. With Outway Socks, he's created a brand that's not only stylish, but more importantly, sustainable and conscious of our impact on the environment. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and join us as we dive into this amazing story behind Outway Socks, the challenges and successes of starting a business, and the future of the fashion industry with Rob. Welcome in. How are you? I'm doing great. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks. I'm excited to talk to you about socks because I think a lot of people don't think what we put on our feet is so important. So tell us a little bit about the history and the mission of Outway Socks. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, socks for too long have been an overlooked piece of apparel. It's kind of what we've traditionally just gone to a big box store and bought, you know, like a, a 10 or 20 pack of just white, relatively uh, inexpensive and low quality socks. Um, and so the real idea sort of back when we started in 2016 was it was quite obvious that the apparel industry was shifting towards all day active wear and athleisure, um, really with the yoga pant kind of kicking that off. Um, so this was like a technical garment that looked great, was functional and versatile throughout the day. Uh, and that really inspired me to be like, well, what would that look like on the foot? You know, the kind of unique insight was um, as a former cyclist, uh, I would actually wear my cycling socks all day and they had fun patterns on them, um, but they weren't necessarily great for things outside of the discipline of cycling. You know, so I liked the feel of them, but when I'd go running, they didn't stay up. Or if I wore them, you know, casually, um, they weren't all co that comfortable when I was just standing all day. So I was like, how could we incorporate, you know, all day performance and comfort and mesh and kind of design in some expressive uh, designs into the socks and, and what would that look like so in simple terms a yoga pant for the foot all day active wear a pair of socks and that was kind of the insight of, of what kicked us off and, and put us on this journey well and you've taken it to the next level too because you also created an environmentally conscious sock which is completely sustainable so tell us what inspired you to add that into the mix so that's what we're working towards. Um, we're not like fully there yet. I'd say like in a perfect world where we're fully sustainable, um, that would look like some sort of circular uh, component where we would make the sock out of recycled yarns and then find a way to have the sock returned and, and then also recycled. Um, so what we've done in the interim while we're trying to figure out the supply chain logistics there is just offset the impact of the socks. We do this in, multi in various ways. One way is making some of our socks from recycled yarns obviously and continually trying to move our entire line to recycled uh, other things like removing plastic from the supply chain and the packaging as well as the boxes and all of that um, using compostable mailers to get it to the consumer um, and then offsetting the things we can't control um, so when we can't get the socks back and recycled right now so what we do is partner with companies like plastic bank to remove plastic bottles from the ocean. So we know that there's say 40 grams of plastic in the synthetic yarns that go into our product. And so we ask ourselves, you know, if we're gonna be contributing to adding that, you know, eventually back into a landfill when someone throws out their socks, um, how can we at least offset that in another way? Um, so like through all of these efforts, we're certainly near zero in terms of our impact and putting it in, but in a perfect world and what we're striving towards one day, we would love to find a way to make our socks out of our socks, if that makes sense. Like have like the uh, the recycled yarns. And then once the people are done with their socks, we would have them recycled back into yarns and then remade again. That would be, that is the future vision. Uh, but until we can fully dial that in and, and logistics and supply chains and costs efficiencies kind of catch up with our idea, uh, we'll, we'll continue to do offset efforts. Well, I love the fact that you've even thought about that. Like, you know that that yarn has certain percentages and you're looking to offset that, that must be a huge challenge when you're looking at your business of ways that you can make it more sustainable. But what are some other challenges that you face when you were either starting the business or as you continue to grow today? Yeah, one kind of highlight I would say on sustainability is that wasn't something we really did until about five years in. Um, and when we did it, we, we were making sure to do a calculation of all of our impact over five years and backdated our, our, um, our contributions to offsetting. So we actually offset uh, like everything from day one. 
But why I say that is because when you're starting a business, cash is tight and it's hard enough. I think if you prioritize some of the nice to haves like sustainability and offsets, which are obviously a great thing to do, but if it's at the expense of your business making it, I always advise people to be like, once you're at a certain level of scale uh, and you've grown your small business, perhaps you can look back and offset. Like these are things that don't need to be done immediately. In the early days, you should really focus on kind of staying in the game and staying alive and making sure your business actually has some sustainability itself. Um, often say if you start a business with the goal of changing the world, well, your first goal should be staying in business. Um, I see too many founders that, you know, start their venture with just, you know, all the greatest ambitions of solving all of the social issues in the world and the economic issues and the like unfair issues. It's like, that's great if you want to use your business for social good, but you can't make an impact if you're not in business. So uh, that's like one sort of uh, important highlight on the, our sustainability journey is that we we did it when we could afford to. Um, it's in, And that's an important thing to remember. Other challenges, oh man, uh, tons. Like I've had co-founder issues. I started the business with someone uh, and it wasn't the right partner. So a couple of years I, I had to buy them out and we didn't have a shareholder agreement. We've had some we rebranded last year on the back of some kind of legal issues around um, the IP and protecting our name and some stuff there. Uh, and then everything else, you know, we went through the pandemic, um, hiring the wrong people, everything. So whatever direction you'd really want to go, we've been in business for, you know, we're in our seventh year now and seen our fair share of, of mistakes. But, you know, I'll, I'll kind of cap off saying that everything we have been through over the, the last, you know, six years have been great learning opportunities. I think in business, the number one goal is to just stay in the game. And there's going to be things that come your way and try and knock you off or put you out of business. But ultimately your ability to be resilient and push through them is what gives you the lessons and the insights and ultimately kind of the know-how to actually get to that next level. So anyone, that's currently scaling their small business feel like they're just challenges coming left, right, and center. If it's any consolation, that's just normal. <laughs> and I your think ability it is. to get through them. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that we as business owners don't really talk about those struggles and that we're all going through them. We those struggles might be different, but they're like similar through lines. And so what are some strategies that you use when we talk about like building your team and collaborating within your company? Because I know that's one thing that a lot of people struggle with. So I'm curious how you've handled that. Yeah, I mean, it's been an evolution over time. I'd say like last year, we went through quite a unique year of challenges with kind of the the dip in the economic uh, kind of market and how things got really tough there. Uh, we had like three different uh, legal attacks on us. Um, and it was just a challenging year. And I think coming out of that year and entering this year, it really highlighted the importance of banding together as a team because ultimately, you know, businesses are just groups of people and we're all trying to accomplish a goal in the same direction. And I think one lesson I learned last year is that the negative things that were happening were overshadowing all the good things we were doing. And so that really impacted our culture and just the kind of love and enjoyment for what we were doing. So I would say that my number one piece of advice and what I've learned recently would be that like when you're building a team is that you're taking time to celebrate the wins because, you know, as an ambitious team or an ambitious founder or just an ambitious person, there's always that next thing to strive after. And I think like it's really easy to kind of overweight all the negative things happen, but really not take the time to celebrate the positive things and realize that like, Okay, I'm going to take a moment to just pat myself on the back for a good job. And I don't necessarily need to like jump right into the next goal. And it's like, oh, I want to do my first million in sales. Okay, well, cool. Now I want five. Now I want 10. It's like, when's enough enough? Um, and that's a really hard thing to kind of remember as a founder or scaling a business is that like, it's okay to celebrate. You got to find times. And, and ultimately that means just building it in. So on our team, we have uh, every Friday, we just stand up as a team and talk about some wins or lessons we learned that week we shout other people out on the team and it really is just a conscious effort to be like, let's take a moment and really, and, and just like talk about our wins because uh, generally the rest of the time we're, we're just continually trying to improve or, or, or get through challenges. There's not much time spent on, on celebrating the wins. So that'd probably be like one big piece of advice and lesson I've learned over the last year. 
Well, and I think too, that probably helps to really encourage your team because each person is recognizing the other person's hard work. And I feel like that's something that doesn't happen very often. We don't take the time to be like, oh my gosh, you did such a great job. That was amazing that you did that. Whether it's a big thing or even just a small thing, it makes a difference. Absolutely. Yeah, I think like collaboration, making sure people's voices are heard. Ultimately, people want to do great work and they want to feel like they're contributing more than just collecting a paycheck. And I'm speaking generally, there's some people that maybe just want to collect a paycheck and that's fine. But I'd say like generally on ambitious, smaller teams and definitely in a startup culture, these are people that kind of like decided to get on board of a lot of uncertainty and unknowns and wearing a lot of hats and trying new things. So your job is a small business owner or a founder is to kind of give those people autonomy, give them the pats on the back when they do great work and, and just give them opportunities to collaborate with each other, affect change in the organization and really kind of, you know, like chart their own path because there's a lot of things you don't get with a small company, which is like that's that necessarily that stability or like uh, uh, even, even like market pay if you're really early on, like there's a lot of downsides joining a small business, but the upsides are also incredible with your ability to try new things and learn and, and gain new experiences and, and grow rapidly within the organization to improve yourself. So it really is just a kind of question of, you know, from an employee level is like, what are your goals? But um, you're right, you know, celebrating those wins and making people feel like they're seen and that their contributions are, are, are recognized is, is super important because ultimately people just want to make an impact. Oh, absolutely. Now, with everything that you've got going on with your business, how do you stay up to date with industry trends, competition, everything that's going on around you? A lot of reading, a lot of, honestly, Twitter is really good for it too, because Twitter is kind of like uh, following the right accounts, like they're digesting uh, and kind of putting out the highlights for me as well. And I can go digger, go deeper on on articles or whatever we want to would dig into also have my team kind of keeping their finger on the pulse of different areas, whether it's the marketing team and what's going on there or product. Uh, and we'll make sure to meet around that at least once a month to kind of just discuss ideas, discuss ideas or what's going on. Um, but it's a lot of just kind of like continually consuming, you know, like there's almost for better or worse, there's not much time in the day where I'm not actively consuming something like in my free time. So if I'm not on a podcast with you or I'm not, responding to an email. If I'm at the gym on a treadmill, I'm listening to a podcast or I'm reading an article. If I'm in the car, I'm generally listening to an audio book or doing something or, or, or listening to like a, a news update. Or if I'm at home, it's like Bloomberg tech on the, on the TV. It's not, you know, like uh, something else. So it's just a continual sort of like funnel of different sources in, and then being sure also to not let that dilute my ideas. Cause like, if you are continually bringing in, um, new resources it, it, so you can kind of just like start to believe everything you hear so I like to bring it all in and help it just inform my own insight so like use that as like a way to see the experiences and, and reflect on the experiences I've been through and hopefully give some help pull out some insights collect and you know connect some different dots so um, yeah just kind of keeping your finger on the pulse and finding the best the best resources to do that well, and I like that you said, too, that you're using those small pockets of time, which normally, you know, might be like the dreaded social media scroll or something like that. Like you're actively using those small windows of time to increase your education, learn more, stay on top of everything. What are your thoughts on the role of technology in business? Is there anything that you guys are using technology wise that you're like, listen, if you're a small business owner, you need to use this program? It would be industry specific. Um, so like talking my own book, if you're selling a product online, I think Shopify is a superpower for like, you know, e-commerce and just digital commerce. Um, they really simplify a lot of the stack for you. Um, other things just like, you know, email platforms like Klaviyo and then all just the free tools too, you know, like in the early days, we really, you know, we got to well over a million dollars in sales in, in the very early days, just utilizing free and organic tools like social media, like Instagram, and at that time, Facebook was still kind of people were on it uh, more than they are now. Um, and so I'd say like more than what tools to use, I would say that you likely don't need a lot of the tools you're using. Like keep it simple, you know, like I'm a big fan of uh, of just like the Google business suite, you know, like you've got docs and sheets and, you know, your ability to build presentations and a drive. Like you don't need to go get notion and monday crm and all these other things and kind of build this like very complex expensive tech stack 
when you haven't even really figured out your business yet. I think there's like a really important distinct, distinction between people that are doing business and playing business. And so like playing business is like getting all the latest technology and the tech stack and building your business plan, all the things that don't actually generate revenue for your company. Uh, where doing business is like, let's just focus on finding our first our first user, making the product better, you know, not overcomplicating processes. So I'd say like, Tech in the early days should be like the the minimal viable stack before and then figure out, you know, what you're going to need to scale from there. Because making a lot of those processes and decisions in the early days, too, with the amount of rapid change there is in a small business and startup, like you're going to have just tech debt that you're working through. Like, oh, this program doesn't work anymore or this process is, is irrelevant. And then you're continually having to update these things. And it's just a waste of time that I found. And I'm speaking from experience of making all these mistakes. So hopefully someone can listen to that and, and take it to heart. So yeah, industry specific, figure out what like the, the best free or you know low cost tools are to make your life easier and then don't overcomplicate it. I'm glad that you said that because that is something I love technology. So I am totally like, ooh, Notion. Ooh, what's this? You know, and it's so hard to not get sucked in. But that's one of my goals for this year is to be like, okay, what are we using? What do we love to use? And what else can it do? Because there's so many different things that all these programs can do that it's like we're not utilizing it to its full potential, but we've bought something else because we thought it couldn't do that. So really simplifying that process. And I'm glad that you said that because I think there's so many, there's so much noise now nowadays with technology and what do you need and oh you need this to be successful when really you don't you just got to keep it simple because the less complicated the better especially when you're starting out and especially when you're growing your team so if someone is curious about the company's journey they're curious about where to purchase socks where's the best place to connect with you at so if you want to just like look more into our business we're just outway.com o-u-t-w-a-y.com uh, for me personally, I'm, I'm quite active on Twitter and LinkedIn. So just uh, at Rob Fraser, R-O-B-B-F-R-A-S-E-R. Um, and I'll, I'll post like shorter t- shorter form content on Twitter um, and then longer form sort of sharing the journey and lessons on, on LinkedIn. Um, and I do my best to respond to, to messages and DMs when possible. Um, but uh, that's the best way to kind of like follow and see what I'm up to. Well, and I'll be sure to link that in the show notes too. So people have quick access to that. So one final question for you before we wrap up, what is one piece of advice that you would give to a small business owner? I think in theme of what we've just talked about, it would be focus. You know, it's so easy when you're new to the game to kind of like get shiny object syndrome or maybe a quick win and think you're a genius that you can apply to something else. And realize that like business is hard. It takes a really long time to grow and be successful despite what you see online. So focusing on doing the right things, focusing on what matters uh, and focusing on like the real, you know, reason you got into it in the first place is is just undervalued these days. Um, it, it's just, I've just learned that lesson time and time again, every time we try to do something new, there's the fallacy in which that you think that because you're not doing it, once you start, that will change your life and it'll make everything better. And that's just not true. Um, Results come from continual long time effort and the compounding results of that effort. And you just got to put the time in and do the work. So I think in order to do that, you have to keep focused on the main thing. Yeah. And remaining humble too. Like everything you just described was like, oh yeah, you have to remember that like you didn't just create the most amazing thing in the entire world. It's like, no, we have this business. We're trying to grow it. You know, we're going to make mistakes. I mean, I think that's something like I mentioned before that we don't talk enough about. And so making sure that you're remaining focused and that mistakes are going to happen. And if you know that going into it, you'll be able to move forward faster. So thank you so much for spending time with us today. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me on.